Oh, a package from Avid CNC. What could that be? Well, looks like we got a new dust collector boot for the CNC today. Several different brushes, lots of parts. Looks like I'm not going to get anything productive done today. Hey everybody, Jim Neve here again. Um, as you guessed it from the clip before, um, today my new Avid CNC dust boot uh, system came. Um, full disclosure, they sent me this one, I didn't pay for it, uh, so this review uh, is as always as honest as it can be but I thought I'd let you know that I did not pay full price for this but um, dust boots are kind of a funny thing um, you know some people make theirs out of plywood and they work just fine uh, some people make theirs a little fancier like mine I have mine's machined out of HDPE I've got a halo light inside so I can really illuminate the area that I'm working on. I've got a couple of laser crosshair targets so that I can um, see, know where my bit is gonna be, like on my touch plate, even when my Z-axis is raised up high. But I've been um, meaning to build a new one because my old design is one of the kind of the old style ones that uh, have the, the long oblong brush, so when this brush, when you're cutting and you kind of come off the board to the edge, it leaves this big gap and the air sucks in there instead of pulling the sawdust out. So it doesn't do a very good job. Uh, the other thing I've wanted to do is, uh, besides isolate the area of the brush, I wanted to reduce the height or lower it so that this area isn't so prone to hitting clamps and things like that. So. Um, I've been meaning uh, uh, to build a new one of my own, and then lo and behold, Avid came out with a brand new design recently, and I get to test it out. So uh, they've addressed several of the things that I didn't like about mine. Um, so the first part of that is they've made uh, the main mounting, or that should say, I guess, the main frame of it out of machined aluminum so this is a very strong piece and then they're nice enough to go machine out some of the unnecessary metal to reduce the weight of it um, and then this adapts to many different spindles by the adapter ring that they've installed in here so you you can get this you know for the four horsepower the eight horsepower the old three horsepower one or, or other spindle sizes another nice thing they did with this is they offset the center hole of that. So by turning this, you basically can, you get about an inch of adjustability in and out and sideways on here, which is important because you might have something like a laser on here that you don't want to hit or the backside or, or of, uh, depending on your mount, the backside of your spindle mount um, or your Z axis, your Z stage. So um, it's nice, uh, nice and adjustable and solid and then they, the bottom section is this clip on uh, section that uh, provides the air chamber from the vacuum side to the brush side and then the brushes come in three sizes this is the long one this is the short one um, and they've got one in between so uh, these are just magnetically attached uh, on there they come off easy and so you you can order it with the kit just comes with one but you can order uh, all three uh, heights if you want different ones and then the final thing is the actual uh, hose connection is also magnetic so it pops in here and locks on with the rotation so the cool thing is there you can remove your hose and clean up around here uh, real simply by pulling it off and, and so I used to have a sec separate hose that I had to go drag around my CNC to clean up periphery dust and uh, now you can just use the one that you have on your machine. 
So let's get this installed and see what it looks like. And then I want to do a test uh, with my big slab slayer bit. That's kind of my worst case um, dust generating bit. Uh, and that'll give us a good idea of how good this really sucks up all the dust. All right, so I got it all mounted and everything. Uh, one thing I wanted to show was some people were having problems with static electricity. Uh, so my hose that comes out of my, I've got an automatic gate that opens up when the uh, spindle turns on. The hose from that all the way down to my dust boot is an anti-static uh, hose it's got a, a metal rib in it but it's also supposed to be slightly conductive you can't actually measure it with a regular ohm meter because they're like a couple gig ohms per square and that's really not enough for a typical uh, meter to register anything for conductivity but it does work very well um, you notice right here I've put a little piece of copper wire in there to grab that uh that internal wire get the focus a little there and i've screwed that to the chassis of the cnc so my hose comes down and is supported by this aluminum bracket that i bolted to the back of my um i guess the, the cable guard or chase um, and that keeps the hose essentially you can see here it's not it can't really touch any of the cables so I don't have any static problems because the hose is grounded and it's slightly conductive and it's not touching any of the wires for the sensors or anything. So um, that's one of the things you want to avoid because if you, if you do get static electricity going back into your sensor wires and stuff, it can cause your ESS and other things to glitch. So good to avoid that. Um, so now you can see here's the quick detach on the hose so I can I don't have enough slack here to actually reach to do anything effective with it but if you if I did it would be a great vacuum head uh, that just clicks on there it's magnetic and has these little tabs so it really can't go anywhere uh, it fits on here super tight you can see I've got the big the new op laser on here and there's I could adjust it easily with this rotatable ring I could easily rotate it so I had a gap here that I wanted um, you can see the gap that I have in the back there. So it all fits on there very well. Um, one thing I did discover that you do have to take this unit off to actually get your wrench up in here um, to, you know, take your collet nut off. And I think, you know, that's, that was intentional. That's why they made it so easy to take this piece off. When I originally saw it, um, see, I can, I can do this one handed easily while I'm running the camera. Uh, it's, it's, so it's a very easy thing to do. Originally, when I saw the design on the internet, I thought that you would just be able to remove the brush and get at it, but I don't think you really could do that very easily. It's it's not intended to work that way. So basically, the you don't need to switch these uh, brushes out or take it out unless you're changing the style. Again, there's three different sizes. I'll put the the large the long one here for contrast, so it's probably a good inch longer uh, than the short one. So I'm going to the short one is just about perfect, I think, for my big slab slayer bit, which you can see here. And I'm going to use that bit to test the dust collection capability of this because when you're playing the big slab. It really throws out the sawdust. Uh, you know, if you if you take a half inch or less diameter bit, if you actually calculate the velocity of the chips coming off of there, even at 20,000 RPM on the bit, it's actually very slow. So, just about any dust boot can collect the dust from that. Um, and and most of the time on my old boot design, I had the front uh, bristles cut off so for visibility, and it would still collect you know suck the chips back in as they were trying to exit out that hole so that's so the best test is really one of these large diameter bits this one happens to be two and a half inches um, on my old one that it would actually throw chips right through the brush um, my my bristles on mine um, show you here they're a lot softer and you can see they got kind of mangled up and um, they were just they weren't a very good 
a choice uh, for a, a broom or a brush like this. They they tended to get stuff stuck in them, uh, debris and stuff. And so I'm thinking that this, the ones that Avid has, I can tell they're a lot stiffer. And so they're not going to suck in like this one did uh, and get all twisted up and gnarly with like plastic and wood chips and stuff in there. So um, I'm going to take a shot at planing this off. So I've cleaned my table off. There's no sawdust or anything on here now. And I'm going to plane off some of this mesquite and see how dirty this thing is afterwards. All right, let's see what kind of job this thing did. Um, first of all, I note that there's not really much dust settled up on this plastic piece. So one of the concerns sometimes with certain plastics is they can really build static up badly. And then you suck all kinds of sawdust, especially if you're cutting like black HDPE. That stuff seems to be a static magnet and it just turns to fuzz all over everything but this is pretty clean there's uh there's just a few little pieces in there um i took off almost a half an inch off this plank and you could see when i was cutting my my cutter and the brush they were coming out pretty far over the edge and i did that on purpose just to see what it was like when that that open area was exposed for the vacuum to see if it would still be able to pull the chips in and it really did. Um, you can see there is a little dust here, um, really small pieces. But um, we're taking off a half an inch on this thing. I've got some, uh, a, a lot of big tables, uh, river tables with epoxy and stuff. Uh, and generally with my old one, I would have, I would have sawdust all over the place. And this is the cleanest it's ever been after cutting something with that bit. Um, like you said, uh, you know, half inch or smaller diameter bit really is not much of a challenge for any dust collection. Uh, even a shop vac can take care of that fine. But when you got one of these, you know, couple inch diameter cutters, they running at 18,000 RPM, they throw chips so much faster than a small diameter bit that uh, it's really a challenge. Uh, I didn't see anything uh, squirting out underneath with my old one. I would see pieces fly kind of underneath that would actually go through the bristles because again my my bristles are too soft on mine. This one's a good design. You can kind of you can kind of hear they're they're pretty stiff, but yet I was watching them as it would go over these cracks and stuff and it follows the contours pretty good. Um you might have noticed in the video there was a little bit of rocking of of this. You could see the metal edge coming loose. That's because this one's not very flat. Uh, Avid told me, I, I noticed this this morning, you can see this one's crooked. Avid told me they fixed that in the manufacturing process. I got one of the uh, original ones. Um, so they're much flatter. Um, it's important that they're flat because this, this bottom under here is lined with magnets. So with this one being so warped, it's, um, it's only touching a couple of the magnets. And yet it, you know, it doesn't, feel that strong um but it never came off on this so that's kind of a good sign is on the other one over here i have one is very flat and it really grips this uh brush assembly so i'm not at all concerned about that i'm just going to go back and you know bend those straight and it'll be fine so um so dust collection was was excellent i didn't see any issues with um, you know, the, the bristles getting, I don't think these bristles could even touch because again, this, this is a pretty, it's probably a five and a half or six inch diameter ring. It's pretty far away from the tips of the bit. Um, on my design, 
my bristles are too soft and after they got wore out they tended to bend in and get sucked in and get chewed up by the the bit um, I don't see that happening with these they're just they're just too stiff for that um, so overall the dust I mean number one importance for this is dust collection um, and especially for people who are milling large slabs with these kind of bits this thing really works great uh, I'm, I'm really surprised how clean my tabletop is here so that's definitely a bonus um, like I said before you know everybody has a different idea of what they want their dust collection or their, especially their boot to look like um, this is this I checked it's it will if I take this boot uh, base off I can use the rapid change ATC but with the with this cover on this the vacuum cover it it won't be able to reach in there so it's not ATC compatible I didn't expect it to be when I talked to Avid they said no it wasn't you know designed to be the problem with ATCs is they're all a little bit different so you almost have to design one specific to your use to be able to to do that um, I am gonna probably still design one to work with this rapid change but it's going to have to be totally different and some kind of a dockable solution so this was not meant to be that by avid um so you know it's not a it's not a shortcoming it's just wasn't designed for that i think this really hits the kind of the the middle you know mainstream the idea was i think for them to design something that worked for as many people as possible so that um they they've got a bunch of these different adapter bushings so you know they can put them on the old style they can put them on the four horsepower the eight horsepower and i'm sure they've got some for other spindles like um you know some of the liquid cooled ones and stuff and if not they can make them easily so this is very adaptable with the offset center it's very adjustable it, you know it doesn't interfere with the whole laser assembly here that avid sells um i can I've put a lot of different things on my CNC and this one, so this was pretty adjustable. I'm pretty happy with how they did that. Again, it has the quick detach if you want to go vacuum off your, your tabletop there. Um, so, uh, you know, for the people, this is, I think this is around $300, so it is an expensive dust boot compared to most of the rest, but then again, it's built better than any of them I've seen on an Avid. I've seen some really high-end ones on some really high-end CNC machines um, that are similar to this, but I'm sure they cost as much or more as this too. So, you know, you gotta just kind of decide what you're looking for. If, if, if $20 is okay for you made out of plywood, you know, go for it because that's, that's still effective. Um, you know, a lot of people spend 100 to $200 on a 3D printed model. Personally, I don't like those because I feel like they are somewhat fragile. Um, they, they tend to, to crack and stuff. And if you do crack the housing, you got to get the whole unit again. Whereas this is all individual pieces. Um, so, you know, there's there's plus and minuses all the way up and down the, the price chain. So I do think this is worth $300 uh, for the people that really want quality. So uh, I just wanted to say that because I've seen a lot of comments online and and you know it's it's like everything uh some people want a cadillac some people want a yugo and and everybody's budgets are different so i thought i'd at least say this thing really sucks the <laughs> the chips up uh it does its job beautifully and uh, it's well built and you know i i have would have no problem um buying one of these in fact i had planned to anyway um but Avid beat me to it and sent me one to try out. So hopefully this was useful. If you have any questions at all or any specific tests you'd like me to add, um, I thought this was this was kind of my worst case with the big slab slayer cutting mesquite. But if you have any specific cases you'd like me to try, uh, if it's not too hard, I'll, I'll be happy to do that. Um, but throw your comments down in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Thanks.